since all objects in this lecture hall and near Earth fall with the constant acceleration, which is g, we can write down that the gravitational force would be m times this acceleration g. I would normally write an a for it, but I make an exception now because of gravity. I call it gravitational force. And so you see that the gravitational force due to the Earth on a particular mass is linearly proportional with the mass. If the mass becomes 10 times larger, then the force due to gravity goes up by a factor of 10. Suppose I have here this softball in my hands. In the reference frame of 26100, we, we will accept to be an inertial reference frame. It's not being accelerated in our reference frame. That means the force on it must be zero. So here is that ball. And we know if it has mass m, which is in this case is about half a kilogram, that there must be a force here, mg, which is about 5 newton for half a kilogram. But the net force is zero. Therefore, it is very clear that I, Walter Lewin, must push up with a force from my hand onto the ball, which is about, of course, the same, which is exactly the same 5 newtons. Only now is there no acceleration. So I can write down that the force of Walter Lewin plus the force of gravity equals zero, because it's a one-dimensional problem. You could say that the force of Walter Lewin equals minus mg. F equals ma. Notice that there is no statement made on velocity or speed. As long as you know F and as long as you know m, a is uniquely specified. No information is needed on the speed. So that would mean if we take gravity and an object was falling down with five meters per second, that the law would hold. If it would fall down with 5,000 meters per second, it would also hold. Will it always hold? No. Once your speed approaches the speed of light, then Newtonian mechanics no longer works, then you have to use Einstein's theory of special relativity. So this is only valid as long as we have speeds that are substantially smaller, say, than the speed of light.